I'm surprised that the market reacted the way it did. But then again, I'm not surprised that the market reacted the way it did because for months, I mean, almost for, well, really for over a year now, almost two years, we've heard nothing but bullish comments from, from Jerome. Jerome Rome. We've heard nothing but bullish comments from him. And now we're seeing a little bit of the opposite of that. And so it, it's, it's concerning, but I don't know yet how I feel regarding the markets and this kind of news because I, I have this gut feeling that people have kind of already bought into the fact that inflation is here, it's not going away, prices are gonna to continue to go higher. And I don't know why that would deter people from paying the prices that we're seeing now in the markets. I don't know what about that would deter them. I don't think that all of a sudden tomorrow we're gonna to wake up and prices are up 40% across the board and you know, materials and oil and all the things that we have to use on our regular basis. I'm not entirely convinced that that's there. Sure, a press release um, is awfully well-timed, but I... I'd, I, I just don't know how I feel about that piece. I, I don't think that, I just can't, I can't for a second think that the, that, the, that the U.S., the regular retail investor and hedge funds and people that have billions and billions of dollars under management have not already accounted for inflation in their portfolios. Uh, and if they are managing that level of money and they have not accounted for it, they are stupid. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can really say about that. From a technical standpoint, we are seeing a retracement to the 50 period moving average right now at 452 and more downside is not necessarily a bad thing to lead to a nice bounce. I'm trying to stay uh, unbiased. I'm, I'm not getting short biased. I, I did end up shorting Tesla today and I'm not... Uh, like I, I just didn't, I wasn't entirely convinced in the trade. I sold some calls is, so for example, in this trade right here, we'll just break it down. When we had the market washout right here, and we washed to the midpoint basically, right here at this, I mean, that's three points, two and a half points difference on a $1,100 stock. So that's, that's a few pennies in a smaller price. So when we bounced up here to 1140, I sold a call spread. I sold the 1200 calls and basically I shorted those. I shorted the calls. I just don't see Disney getting that much lower. Given that off the 200 all time highs, right? 20302, if we address that <clears throat> and we say, 203 times, let's say 30%, right? That would be 142. It has fallen roughly 30% off of its highs. <laughs> Do we think that Disney is in a recession? Like, no, I, I don't think Disney is in a recession. I don't think that the company is poorly managed. I don't think that there is a lot of bad things happening to lead to this. 
Um, I don't know what led to the missed earnings like this so much, you know, 37 cents a share versus 80 and so on and so forth. They were pretty consistent there for a while. Um, like we're seeing fairly, I mean, these are fairly big loss. I mean, it's still profitable, obviously, but I think these are some, some far bigger uh, deficits than what was expected, obviously. But we had a similar earnings when it was expected. We had similar earnings back here based on what happened over here, right? And I, I just look at this and I, I go, yeah, I don't think it's that bad. I kind of think that we're just experiencing the same thing that we're experiencing here in PayPal is what we're experiencing in Disney. These are two charts of great examples of what tax loss selling looks like. So I think that both of these charts are going to remain kind of beaten down and choppy until the end of the year, you know, for the next 30 days. I think that is what we should expect out of Disney and PayPal <coughs> is continued tax loss selling. And I, I mean, I guarantee you that fund managers, all they're doing is just rebalancing their portfolios into the, for these two stocks and PayPal and Disney will, yes, exactly. They, there will be a January rally in these two companies. Um, so I, I, I'm honestly okay buying and kind of sitting through some of the sell because I, I have a longer term outlook on something like Disney. And I think that that's, that's kind of where I should remain focused is, is the longer term outlook rather than the shorter term. Now, if the Fed comes in and says, hey, we're jacking the rates up, blah, 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 we're going up a half basis point, right? If we go up a half basis point, God have mercy. That's going to be rough. It's going to be pretty rough. So, I, yeah. Eh. And then we got cruises getting hit with this Omicron crap. Best word I have for it is crap. I I mean, off of the recent highs in the bounce, down from 35 to 20, 